In a world that constantly shifts like the sands of a beach, where values are often traded for convenience and where peer pressure challenges conviction, the call to be an example of the believers is not just a gentle reminder, but a clarion call for every follower of our Savior Jesus Christ. Being an example is not merely about standing out, but standing firm. Not just about being seen, but being steadfast in our faith. As believers, our lives become a living testament of our faith, echoing the teachings of Christ, not just in our words, but more importantly, in our actions, decisions, and the way we touch the lives of those around us. Today, let us dive deep into understanding the magnitude of this call and how we can rise to amplify every facet of our life. Welcome to our brief, yet enlightening, come follow me, exploration into Paul's pastoral epistles 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. These letters, penned by the Apostle Paul, offer guidance encouragement and profound insights into church leadership and personal devotion let's dive in the theme for this talk is be thou an example of the believers one and two timothy the context these letters were written by paul to his protege timothy timothy was a young leader in the ephesian church and Paul provides him guidance on handling challenges, maintaining sound doctrine, and leading with godliness. If you're not a part of our free Come Follow Me curriculum provided by The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we're studying the New Testament this year. You can get this colorful guide along with a free Bible, and you can study with missionaries for free anywhere in the world. So I invite you to click on the link below if you'd like to find out more information. This has truly changed my life. And stay tuned to the end as we're going to discuss ways to improve your teaching habits. That is my favorite part. Leadership qualities. Paul lists the attributes necessary for bishops and deacons, emphasizing character over charisma, the importance of sound doctrine, Paul warns against false teachings and encourages Timothy to preserve the true faith. Endurance in ministry. Paul speaks of his own trials, encouraging Timothy to persevere, stating, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. Titus. Paul's letters to Titus, another young leader, this time in Crete, offers guidance on setting church order and promoting sound living. The key themes, appointing elders. Paul outlines the qualities needed for elders, emphasizing the upright character, living godly lives. Paul provides teachings on how different age groups, like older men, older women, young men, and servants should conduct themselves. The grace of God, Titus 2, 11, 14, speaks of God's grace teaching believers to live righteously. I have a personal testimony on this. I always find that missionaries within the church, when they're set apart and they wear that black badge, they lead by example. They are always ready to share their testimony. 24 7 seven days a week and I I have seen people change I have seen people become from teenagers to young adults that are ready to, to lead and on another note people that serve a mission also are more likely to get a better job because they can put on their application that they spent 18 months or two years serving Heavenly Father and that shows due diligence it shows faith, commitment, and hard work. Philemon. This personal letter is addressed to Philemon concerning Onesimus, his runaway slave who had become a Christian under Paul's guidance. The key themes, forgiveness and reconciliation. 
Paul intercedes on behalf of Onesimus, asking Philemon to welcome him back, not as a slave, but as a beloved brother in the Savior Jesus Christ, Christian Brotherhood. The letter highlights the transformative power of the gospel in redefining relationships, breaking societal barriers, drawing from Paul's pastoral epistles. Let's ponder on a few questions. How can we ensure that our leadership, whether in the church or elsewhere, reflects godly qualities? In what ways can we guard against false teachings in our lives? How can the principles of forgiveness, as exemplified in Philemon, be applied in our own relationships? For me, identifying a leader is feeling that burning in your bosom, feeling that the goosebumps, feeling that you are in the right home. If you're a part of a church and you feel that the pastor or the minister or the priest isn't called of God, I think it's time to look for another home. And I have to bear my testimony and I'm not even through this yet, but I just know that our Savior Jesus Christ lives, that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a church that welcomes and accepts all. I have been embraced with open arms since my baptism in August of 2017. I have served with leaders that oversee over 17 million members worldwide. I have been blessed to work alongside mission presidents, zone leaders of missions, of apostles, Area 70s, and even women that are called to serve, that have brought and strengthened my testimony. And I say this to you with an open heart, that this gospel has changed my life. And I say that as my testimony in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. Now that was interesting because I never bear my testimony in the middle of a lesson, but I just felt the spirit was calling me to do so. And I pray that it resonates with even just one person. That's all that matters. One, if it hits the one, I'm happy. Paul's pastoral letters are a testament to his deep concerns for the early churches and their leaders. They offer us timeless wisdom on leadership, sound doctrine, and personal relationships. As we reflect on these teachings, may we continually strive to embody these principles in our own lives. Remember, in every word of scripture, there lies an opportunity to come closer to Christ. Improving our teachings. Teach clear and simple doctrine. The gospel is beautiful in its simplicity rather than trying to entertain your family with lessons. Requiring much preparation. Strive to teach pure and simple doctrine. Refer to 1 Timothy 1, 3, 7. I'm going to paraphrase these verses. The to be still and abide by Ephesus. When I went into Macedonia, that might, that they teach no other doctrine, for neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart in a good conscience from some having swerved, have turned aside, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. And I can testify to this because I'm dyslexic and learning disabled. And one of the reasons I started this YouTube playlist is to become a better scriptorian and to understand the teachings of our Savior Jesus Christ. And to, so the best way, I'm gonna give a personal example. Um, I graduated high school 
early because of unforeseen circumstances. They just wanted to get rid of me. So I ended up going, what am I gonna do with, with nine months of my life before I enter college? So I went to cosmetology school and I was horrible at it. I couldn't study the anatomy, the physiology. It was a whole different era and they didn't have voice dictation and grammarly for spelling. I was so, uh, I was basically flunking out of all the written exams. And what ended up happening was um, they asked me to teach. And it was about a year and a half after I graduated. And I'm like, what, me? I'm dumb, I thought. I'm dyslexic. Now I say I'm dyslexic in doing. But what my point is that the best way to learn something is to share it and teach it, especially when it comes to the scriptures, relying on Christ, relying on our Savior, relying on the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, our constant comforter. And by putting this together, I may not be the, the best presenter. I may not be the best come follow me instructor or YouTube channel that you follow but I know I'm doing it with a sincere heart. And I know those that know me know that when I mess up, it's a denicism. And that's what I love about each and every one of you. So I wanted to share that with you because I know that we can do anything we set our hearts to. It's the serpent, the adversary, that tells us we can't. So keep that in mind. And I say this as my testimony in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen.